Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar here. Now in the past six to 12 months, there's been releases of many dive watches on the market and the common culprits in terms of maybe amassing the most types of press or enthusiasm around releases are typically say the Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue is a great example. You had new Rolex Mariners as new releases that have come out. But the one that I was perhaps the most excited about or one of them at least was the Zin U50 a straightforward utilitarian dive watch from Germany from a great brand in Zen that is one of my personal favorite brands in a more, I'd say compact package. And definitely is a watch that probably should be on your radar. And today we take a closer look. Let's jump into it. So before we jump into this video, I wanna give a quick shout out to Watch Buys. Big thanks to them for loaning this piece in. I really appreciate that. If you are in the United States, North America, check them out. They're the authorized distributor of Zen watches. I purchased from them in the past on two separate occasions and really enjoyed my experience. Good people over there as well. And now on the subject of German dive watches, this is a very kind of niche subject as well as I say taste as well that goes along with it. This is not a area of divers is going to be for everybody, but another watch on teddybaldasar.com, Mula Glassutas Pro Go, a fantastic dive watch for the money from Germany. We have some available in the pre-owned section of our site, $1,600, which at that price is a killer watch. Comes with a full factory warranty. We source these directly from the brands. These watches have little to no signs of wear on these things. They just cannot be, again, restocked as new. So a great way to get in a fantastic watch at a more affordable price, getting a highly modified Salita movement with their customized uh, regulator neck design with their woodpecker neck, and getting a nice regulated movement inside as well with, of course, fantastic utilitarian looks. Teddyballstar.com, link in the description. Check out that watch. Now, for those familiar with Zen, know that this is a brand that really prides themselves on their pilot watch history. And much of that design has now trickled down into other models within their catalog with their divers. And this U50 we're gonna be looking at today is not necessarily anything new from a design perspective. If you're familiar with the U1, which was unveiled in 2005, as this is going to really uh, package all of those design attributes that we have seen in the past from the U1 in a more compact package with this U50. Now the aforementioned U1 is the epitome in my mind of a German dive watch. As a result of its capable spec and utilitarian design that offered superb legibility with its stark markers and large case of 44 millimeters wide by 50 millimeters long with the case. Even though the U1 wears slightly smaller than its dimensions might suggest, it's still a bigger watch, especially when you consider the almost 15 millimeters of thickness on that piece, leaving a lot of enthusiasts who like the look and the tech in the U1 to admire from afar. Yet as the rest of the industry has been doing some downsizing, as evidenced by watches like the Tudor Black Bay 58 and the recent crop of the Seiko divers, including the Willer and the SPB 143, Zinn have also provided a new, more wearable version of their classic diver with a set of dimensions mentions to be a better fit for many wrists out there on the market. Now, first again, to run down in the specs here, we have a case size of 41 millimeters, thickness of 11.2 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, water resistance of 500 meters. Movement is an automatic SW300. This is a top grade or chronometer equivalent movement. And crystal is going to be sapphire here with double AR coating. And we'll certainly talk about that. And for price, it's going to fluctuate depending on the models, but $2,380 to $3,020 as the general price range. Now it is worthy noting that the version that we have here is going to be the U50T with a fully tegumented case and bezel. The entry level version of the U50 family comes in at that lower end of the price range specified just a moment ago, coming with a submarine steel case, but does come with a tegumented bezel only. And we will talk a bit more about that treatment in a bit, but it is in proprietary surface hardness technology. From here, there is also a few other offerings, including the SDR and the SDRT, which offer the same difference of just the bezel or the entire case of being tangemented, depending on the inclusion of the T in the reference name, but also offer a black bezel rather than the traditional steel bezel that we're gonna be seeing here. Now on the wrist, similar to other Zin timepieces, such as their popular Zin 104, 
the case diameter fails to tell the entire story here. The U50 is an absolute treat to wear with an extremely balanced set of dimensions that make this a comfortable watch for the vast majority of the wearing public. And in particular, thanks to that reduced lug to lug compared to the U1 with its 47 millimeters here compared to that U1's 50 millimeters of lug to lug distance. And perhaps the most notable with its thickness at just 11.15 millimeters compared to the 14 and a half millimeters on that U1. And just across the board in terms of dive watches, this is a very compact package, no question. The U50 captures the vibe of the U1, offering its legible presence in a more restrained package. It's also worthy noting that the weight of this one has been substantially reduced by 35% compared to the U1, furthering improving the wearing experience in that regard as well. And just to add a bit further here from what you will feel on the wrist, now the U50 I would say wears closer to a 39 and a half millimeter case to a 40 millimeter case. I wear commonly my Explorer 2, my 16570, which is a 40 millimeter, wears very similar to a 39 and a half millimeter case. And this one is pretty much in line in terms of the dimensions across the board when you put these side by side against one another. So with that considered, I think this is going to be really in a Goldilocks zone and probably uh, candidly, a pretty small dive watch, all things considered. Now, while Zinn is known well for their H-Link style bracelets, which are excellent for the price, this particular example came on Zinn's silicon strap with their milled two button release clasp. If you've never experienced Zinn's silicon straps, they are superb as they should be considering their price. The strap is soft and feels refined. The only real drawback I see there is that you do have to cut this rubber strap down to size, which is a little bit scary. Maybe measure twice before you do so, but really nice once you have it sized up and will fit well on the wrist. Now the clasp here, different than the commonly criticized clasp on their bracelets, is a joy to use. It features a blasted treatment that we'll see with the case and is a bit less bulky than that of the clasp that's gonna be seen on their bracelets. It also features a diver extension and all in all is very well done in this department. Now, since I only have the rubber strap version for this U50 here, I don't wanna to speak too much about the bracelet, but uh, because I have some prior experience with the H-Link design bracelets from Zinn, I will strongly recommend just going that route if you are gonna purchase one of these. So like the majority of Zinn's tool type watches, this U50T features an all out bead blasted finish, which despite not appealing to flash like many watches commonly do nowadays, it perfectly complements the all business feel presented by this piece as a whole. In terms of architectural elements, the U50 case doesn't have much in the way of bevels or over the top finishing techniques going on, but rather a smooth shape case with cleanly executed shorter, thankfully drilled lugs that do nothing to distract from the important use case the watch was designed for. It does feature a screw down crown that is located at the four o'clock position, offering presence while not limiting both lefties and righties from wearing it as a result of its position. It has ridges to make for an easy grab and in terms of feel, it's solid and has some of the best threading you're going to find for a crown in the price range that it's at. Now in this instance, it is very important to talk about the tegmented case because that is gonna be a driving factor perhaps on which watch you might go for with this U50 family. Now tegmented cases, this is a proprietary process that Zinn goes through to harden their cases and it's going to bolster up the resistance to scratches and the relative hardness to the case five times more than traditional stainless steel, which in terms of Vickers hardness scale, traditional stainless steel, around that 250 HV on that scale. And then with the tegmented case going to be boosted up five times more to 1200 HV. So surface level scratches and things like that, these things are going to be able to handle a beating like many other Zinn watches, but even further to a degree. In terms of some of their entry level options like the Zinn 556 and the 104, this is really not offered at all. Uh, it's really once you start getting a little bit higher up with Zinn's more, I would say high tech, tech timepieces where you're going to start seeing this. And the U50 is right in kind of more that entry level door into seeing this technology uh, utilized. In the case of the U50T, the case and the bezel both come with this tegmented treatment, but as a result, we'll bring the price up quite a bit. And considering the relative durability of the traditional submarine steel case, this could be seen as overkill for some who don't really plan on pushing the watch to the brink which let's be real is probably most people. And at the end of the day, you're really gonna be the only person to be able to answer whether that fortified case is going to be worth it for you. Zinn though have closely followed the U1's design language and again provided an engraved captive 
divers elapsed time bezel equipped with a large loom pip at the 12 and black and red filled markings across the bezel. With deeply scalloped edges, this bezel is very easy to turn and has great action but does have some play that is noticeable. But in totality, the bezel is very much on par with what you would expect from a tool watch brand like Zinn, especially when you are considering the upside of the tegmented version, being able to handle the most taxing levels of abuse and reinforcing screws along the outside of the bezel to assist the bezel from not popping out under really strenuous diving scenarios. Casting over the dial of the U50, it has a flat sapphire crystal with AR coating on both sides. Now, this is a huge part of the aesthetic appeal of this watch as well as many other Zen watches on the market. This one's going to have a incredibly glossy black dial, which works well with the stark markers that you're going to see throughout. But when combined with that double AR coating, it is going to pop and make this tool watch have a bit more flash, but not so much so that it can remain true to this identity that it's trying to uphold. And when looking at this watch from certain angles, it does appear as if this crystal is not even there. There are gonna be some potential downsides to this as you are getting a very clear view of the dial, but it could smudge up, but also because there is an outer layer of AR coating, you do have the potential of it having some very just surface level scratches that could appear on the crystal despite it being sapphire. I've had a Zen 556 for quite some time and I own a Zen 104. I never had issues with this and I think the double AR looks fantastic, especially with the black dial, which are notorious for not being very good with reflections and glare and keeping their legibility if that crystal treatment is not good. Now with the Zen U50's matte black color and very large square printed loom hour markers coupled with a simple white on black minute track, this dial was clearly designed for visibility in mind. Add to that the U1 signature squared off syringe style red and white handset and a subtle white on black date wheel viewed through the cutout at the three, you have one of the more legible dive designs out there on the market. It's also important to note that this design is certainly not going to be for everyone as I already mentioned, but Zen has never been a brand that's going to appeal to that dynamic anyway. Dial text here is subtle with Zinn signature in white at the 12 and U50 automatic German spelling, of course, and the water resistant all printed at the six in red. The Superluminova on this piece is in no shortage of supply given the large surface area it occupies within the markers and the handset. That considered the loom is not quite as strong as maybe you would think in compared to some of the competition out there in the price range, but still should offer plenty of visibility for wearers. In summary though, looking at the style, Zinn's design language is is all its own, which is actually more of an esoteric idea in watches than one might think. There's no overly catering to nostalgia or gimmicks, just pure modern dive watch design with a distinctly German flair. And as you might expect with this exterior package, inside the U50, we have a solid Swiss made movement that is high in quality, but without any pretense. Like a lot of Zinn watches, underneath the business-like closed case back, this U50 runs on a more or less off-the-shelf caliber from Salita, in this case, the SW300, a movement that is intended as a direct competitor to Etta's venerable 2892. Now, Zinn in the last several years have shifted to housing Salita calibers as a way to counteract the inconsistent supply of movements that tend to come from Etta. Now, the SW300 gets a nice upgrade in its machine finish, with the custom Zinn rotor being featured in this instance while also getting a slight boost to its power reserve and being thinner than the SW200 by a full millimeter, helping to assist this watch's impressive thickness of just 11.2 millimeters. And it is important to note in the case of Zen, they are housing top or chronometer equivalent movements in their watches. So we are going to get a higher grade for these movements while also being fine tuned with regulation with this watch running at just a second off from perfect time of day. In terms of specs here, the SW300 runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour or four Hertz, features hacking and hand winding. So hacking, stopping that second hand when you pull out the crown to the farthest position and a power reserve of 42 hours. So looking at Zen in the last five years, we've seen their prices start to gradually go up market quite a bit. And they're not seen as maybe the greatest value in the world or some of the best value in watchmaking as they once were. Still very good watches for the money, no question. Uh, but we are, I think, slowly being removed from the days where you could get into a Zen watch for under a thousand dollars with their 556s. That said, the U50 is, in a, I think, a great proposition in the marketplace in which it lands. It is starting to get up there in price, but it's different. And that I think is a reason why this timepiece is a very compelling offer. 
it's not gonna be for everybody, and that is without question. You look at this thing, and even looking at myself in the mirror and saying, hey, would I have purchased this watch three years ago? I would have said, no freaking way would I have bought this watch. I would have thought it wasn't a good looking timepiece, and I don't think it's going for looks. It still, I think, is very attractive for what it is, but you begin to appreciate what Zen is going for as well as what this design is. It's unique, it's legible, it keeps in mind and true to the pilot inspiration that this brand has in regards to their founder helmet, Zen, uh, from many years ago, now celebrating a great anniversary this year, being founded in 1961. You see a lot of those roots with their diver watch design. Stark markers, that glossy black dial, it comes together really well when combining it with that double AR coating crystal. Very capable water resistance. Yes, you're getting a third party off the shelf movement, but it is going to be finely tuned and regulated to run at chronometer spec. And then also going to have a very thin and wearable case. Again, this watch is not going to be for everybody, but if you're going for a compact wearer, a German style utilitarian watch that can take a beating, the Zen U50 has gotta be on your list. But all right guys, I'd love to see comments down below. What do you think of this watch? If you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I'm a huge fan of the Zen U50. I uh, can't believe I'm saying that because again, a few years ago, I would have not looked at this watch probably more than once. I mean, this really has been a growing fascination of me getting into more tool watches. And this is a very good one from Zen uh, that I think more people maybe should consider, but it seems like based on pre-orders and them not even getting these out yet in the market, it seems like there's other people that share my opinion and thinking this is a really cool piece. Also, if you're on the market for this watch, link down below to watch buys if you're in North America, definitely check it out. And then also teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, full factory warranty, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer service. We also offer price match. So if you see one of our watches at another authorized dealer for a cheaper price, fill out the form on the product page and we'll give you a call. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate from our store goes right back into the content that we're creating, fostering a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. Finally, definitely follow us on Instagram. Check out the review channel. We're posting another three to seven videos a week. I'll have both of those in the description. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.